I know from the bottom of my heart, inshallah, that this video is going to create future millionaires because I'm going to share with you five strategies that made me a millionaire, alhamdulillah, by the age of 30. Now, to be clear, I'm honestly not making this video to flex, but given that we make this channel to help Muslims level up financially and we've had some small success ourselves, it only seems right to actually share that with you as our truth so that you can learn from that, inshallah, as well. Now, I don't come from a business business background at all. I'm a corporate lawyer. Looking back, I have identified five pivotal strategies that helped shape our way to the present day. And I'll be sharing that with you in this video. Let's go. The first strategic and most important move that I made was to pick what type of millionaire I wanted to be and to make sure that it suited my strengths and interests. Because you see, there's actually many different paths to becoming a millionaire, but they all boil down into basically three big buckets. Number one, you could have a high paid job work for Goldman Sachs. Number two, you could do a boring business, but you could do it really well and scale it up, such as a pharmacy. And number three, you could set up a a tech startup that makes money and you can scale that to huge potential. Let's unpack those. So for example, you could decide, like I did initially in my career, to go into an extremely high paying career like law. Starting salaries at the US law firm, like the one that I worked for today, are $215,000. And if I was still there today, I would be on around $300,000. And I can assure you that's not the salary that I am on right now. If you just hang on for a decade or so, once you're into these careers, you'll easily be making about 500k to about a million dollars. And if you make it to partner, then you're on to about two to five million dollars per annum. And if you move out to the Middle East, you'll make the same but tax free, immediately boosting your salary by another 40%. I know people in my circle who are roughly the same age as me and same bracket as me who are making around the equivalent of three to four hundred thousand pounds just because of that additional tax free boost. And there's a lot of prestige around these jobs too. My old law firm was led by the UK's former attorney general represented Qatar against Dubai when they had a falling out and we regularly worked on top deals that were headline news. But the downside to this is that you are always a cog in a machine. That attorney general, he used to work literally on a treadmill. I mean, that's such a metaphor. You're a slave to your client. Hours are horrific, unpredictable and in the hands of your client even until you are much older. Let's say like that attorney general is much, much older and to climb that greasy ladder, you need to be willing to suck up the pain and play within the cultural norms of your firm. And I just found this incredibly stifling. Now, someone might say, well, what about if you become much more senior? Doesn't it become a lot more relaxed? Well, to some extent it does, but actually partners at these top law firms and banks work incredibly hard still. They still put the hours in. They actually have to do a lot more evenings now because it's a lot more about schmoozing. So when you're trying to think about compromising your family time and all the other things, it's still a big commitment. Now, option two is you become an entrepreneur, but you go for a business model that 100% works and makes money. The only risk is can you execute it well? So you could open up a car wash, for example, but if you go down this boring business route, a single car wash doesn't cut it, right? It might make you 200k profit every year if you're really lucky and it's a massive car wash. So the way to become a millionaire in this ball game is to do two things. First, really understand cash flows, efficiencies, and margins. Basically, be really good at the boring but vital stuff. And number two, but you must scale. And by scale, we mean you need to have multiple of these car washes across the country or across the world. But to scale, you either need to reinvest all of your profits or you need to land massive contracts or you need to have debt. Most of the Muslim multimillionaires living in the UK today are of this flavor of millionaire. For example, you've got people who made money in real estate, people who made money in supermarkets, people who made money in professional services, people who made money in groceries, all of them are boring but scaled businesses. The problem with this route is that you might not enjoy the boring stuff. And as a Muslim, you'll struggle to find the right type of halal financing you need to scale in this game. So the route I ultimately chose for myself was a third and final path to becoming a millionaire, becoming a tech entrepreneur. And let me be very clear, for me, this third path was the best, but it's very credible and perfect 
perfectly acceptable and cool to go for the first two paths as well. Many people have made that work and they love it. So the idea with a tech entrepreneurship is that you use software or deep technology to look to build a business model around that. For example, you might develop an AI tool that allows you to search the internet, but unlike the car wash, it's not obvious how you monetize that. But in the case of Google, they correctly figured out that the way to monetize this technology is through paid ads by using a keyword auction and complex algorithms. It seems obvious today, of course, but it really wasn't then. So now you have a great technology, you've got a bit of a business model around it. The next thing you need to hope for is that this new technology isn't just a small niche thing, but it's something that could become enormous. Of course, Google worked out just fine for them. However, tech entrepreneurship isn't right for everyone. You might not like tech very much, right? Developing software and leading an engineering and product team is a very particular skill set. And also with a tech startup, it is a very high risk pursuit. The downside with a law career or a car wash business is very capped. You're never going to be completely broke and lose everything. But with a tech startup, things can literally go to zero if you fail. I chose tech entrepreneurship as I personally love working on completely blue sky stuff that has never been done before and coming up with innovative and new business models rather than finding efficiencies in established business models. I quit my job, age 28, at a time when my salary was around 150,000 pounds. I had just picked up a mortgage and my son was two years old. It was, for obvious reasons, a massive decision by quitting, but it was pivotal for the growth of IFG and Curate Capital. You see, there's a burning the boats effect. There's now no going back. You really have to make this thing work. And that has a wonderful way of focusing the mind and adding that extra nitrous oxide to your fuel tank. The other thing that happens is that people take you more seriously. It's hard for another full-time businessman who's hustling and knows the difficulty of all this stuff to take someone else seriously who is part-time. The final and obvious benefit of quitting my job was that I was free all day for the first time to work on my business. Time is the most precious resource we have and for the first time I was investing it completely where I thought I could make the most returns. But a word of warning, I carefully planned my exit from my corporate career. I negotiated a low monthly payment for my Islamic mortgage, I raised a small pot of money from friends and family prior to quitting, and IFG and the business was already turning over around £10,000 per month at that point. So yes, quitting is a must if you're serious, but you must plan it carefully and do it with thought. The third crucial strategy that most folks get wrong is they don't play to their strengths and they don't compound on their strengths over a very long period of time. I started looking into Islamic finance back in 2012 when I was still studying PPE at Oxford. I subsequently did a master's on the subject then I embarked on my Alamiya degree as well and through my corporate career I then deepened that expertise from a different perspective and IFG added another mass market slant to it because remember it started off as a blog in 2015 and it allowed me to develop as a creator. Then over the last two years, I've been studying a few key Islamic finance texts. Every Friday with Mufti Faraz Adam, we finished that last year and we've now started another two year long study of the Quran and Hadith that underpin Islamic financial matters. Alhamdulillah, this year, one of the world's largest publishers, Wiley, asked us to write a book on halal investing. The point is very simple. I love Islamic finance and investing and that's my mission. And every year I plug away at my own craft and try and fix something that I see in myself and add something else to my toolkit. And so for someone to now replicate this decade long journey from a standing start is extremely difficult. So pick a skill or domain expertise you have and go really deep in it. Become world class at it. Becoming world class at something people value will significantly increase your chances at becoming a millionaire. The fourth game changer for us was the strength of our network and the time we took and continue to take to build out our network. Pretty much every day since 2019, I will be either building our network through a new connection or rekindling an existing contact. To give you a sense of this, I was just flicking through my WhatsApp conversations from this week and I've spoken to 133 people from world famous scholars to multimillionaires to charity workers, old friends and teammates. This has just become a habit for me now. What this means is any 
problem we face today, any introduction we need, we usually know the right people to make things happen. And in business, like in all walks of life, it's often about who you know, not what you know. So do the hard yards, the cold LinkedIn outreach, the asking your friend for an introduction to someone you want to speak to, then add value to who you meet and ask them to introduce you to others and do that every single day for half an hour, an hour, and you will have built a massive network in no time at all. The fifth and final strategy we benefited from as recently as this year is optimize your business for massive out of the park swings. If you want to be a millionaire, you're going to have to by definition achieve something that 99% of people won't. So logically, you won't get there by doing ordinary stuff. You're going to have to take big swings and try and hit the home run. You'll fail mostly, but every so often it'll come off. As Michael Jordan said, he's taken 9,000 shots that missed in his lifetime. He's lost 300 games. He has had 26 moments where he could win the game with a shot and he missed. And you know what he said? That's why he succeeded. Because every shot that you don't take, you've already lost anyway. And look, what you can't do is play in products or industries that don't return you potentially big outcomes, even if you do really well in them. For example, we offer digital Islamic wills and we're the biggest provider by volume in the UK today. However, even with that level of scale, as a Muslim community is just 7% of the total population, this doesn't return you a million dollar outcome. So if we were just to focus on this, it wouldn't make commercial sense. We might be a nice, small, profitable business, but we wouldn't be a scale business. Instead, what we are laser focused on today, thanks to the advice of our mentors, is Curate Capital, our wealth management and investment arm. Here, the restricting factor is Muslim wealth that we can manage, but there are billions of dollars out there for us to manage, and we've literally just scratched the surface there. And already, alhamdulillah, that is giving us decent returns. So make sure that you are truly taking those big swings that have outsized exceptional impact and that your life is set up to take those at least once a month, if not more often. Because the more swings you take, the more chances you have of connecting. Well, there you are, folks. I hope you found that insightful and I hope it inspires many of you on your own millionaire journeys. I should stress though, money isn't the end goal here. I use it in this video as a nice number that we all conventionally measure progress by, but the end goal must be much bigger than money. In our case, our mission is to help Muslims get back to a level financial playing field. And honestly, I know it's easy and glib for me to say that, but I think for me, that's ultimately far more important than all of this money. That's kind of a side effect. And if you look at what truly successful multimillionaires and billionaires actually end up doing, they end up giving away most of their wealth. Why do they do that? Because in this finite life, we actually just don't have the time to spend all of that money anyway. So ultimately, if that is where you're headed, then the purpose behind what you're doing is actually far more important. And if your end goal is just just money. Well then, ironically, you're less likely to get there. Please do like this video, subscribe to the channel, it really does help us, and I'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum.